Good morning, everybody. This is Cheryl, and I'm just coming to you to um, tape a video for the group. And it's my first video, but I'm really happy that it's with the group. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that today we're going to make a um, fall journal slash notebook. You can use it for a journal. You can use it for a notebook or um, something just to have. Um, if you're going to be preparing Thanksgiving, you could put down your Thanksgiving menu, your lists that you need to get at the store, things like that. Or you could just have a little journal maybe for each guest and you could, you know, leave it um, at each um, couple's table. Uh, perhaps, you know, you could put their name on it or something and um, they could take it home as a little gift. Um, there's lots of things that you can do with these. And um, you could even send it in the mail um, as um, a little Thanksgiving or Halloween. You could decorate it for Halloween for a child or even for an adult. Um, but anyway, um, a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen paper bag journals. Um, or if you've, you know, you've probably made paper bag journals, but... I'm actually, I actually make my own paper bags to make my paper bag journal because I am very frugal and I don't like to spend a lot of money. So that's what I'm basically going to tell you today. It's not so much how to make a journal because you know how to do that, um, but how to make a paper bag journal using something like this, which is the same as a paper bag. Um, so anyway, this is the masking paper that you get when you paint and it comes in a roll at the hardware store. Um, Ace Hardware has it for $4 a roll and you get enough for the rest of your life. Um, anyway, so what you do is you cut off a piece um, of, the, you cut off a piece of this and you want to make sure that the piece is 10 by seven. So, um, I'm sorry, no, is that right? No, the piece of paper you're going to cut is 14. The piece of paper you're going to cut is 14 by 10. And then fold it in half, it's going to be 10 by seven. Because what you're going to do is you're going to make a paper bag like this and which is the same if you can see on the inside this one i've just stenciled so the inside is the same and it's a nine nine inches this way by six inches this way but it's made out of this only it's stenciled and i have put beeswax on it if you're going to use beeswax just make sure you use the little pellets and don't use your home iron you use your craft iron or an iron from goodwill or something like that to do that with because you won't be able to use it for your clothing anymore um so anyway this is a nine by six bag and most of these bags come you can get these all nine by six but they're pretty expensive especially if you get a pattern or something like that on it they sell them like on etsy for ten you can get 10 for like eight dollars or something ridiculous but anyway um so you take your 10 by <clears throat> you take your 10 by 7 and you fold it in half and then we need to make it so we need to come in if it's going to be nine by six we want to come in an inch on here So that we have a side to it and then on the bottom we're going to come up after we already do this so we've got this down there we go all right so that gives us our nine because we just folded in an inch here which is going to be, if you can see it better that way. But I don't glue it on like that, I glue it this way, because I don't want to see it, okay? 
So then you just take your glue And just don't put a, you know, don't put it too close to the edge, but get it enough to the edge and kind of just dot it, you know, so that you don't have a whole bunch of seepage. And I use um, Fabri-Tac because one, it dries fast and two, um, it dries fast. <laughs> so I mass make these um, so you can make them, you can make them ahead of time and put them away and then pull one out if you need it. Um, or you can make it for the specific holiday or friendship, or if you've got a specific journal that you have to make for a swap or something like this, you can make them ahead of time or you can actually make this, you know, for any season. That's what's so neat about them. They're just perfect. They're very easy to make. You can make them in five minutes. It's, they're so easy. The, 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 the thing that takes you the longest is the decorating, of course, which is always the case. So you wanna go up an inch on the bottom, like that. Now, a lot of times you'll cut this off, this excess, if you're using heavyweight paper. This is not heavyweight paper, so I don't take that excess off but I do make it fancy by cutting just a small, I hope you can see this, a small snippet off the side and a small snippet off the other side. And then you're going to take this and you wanna glue in here, just to tack that down so it doesn't go anywhere. Give that a little burnish. And then you wanna take this, and again, you wanna tap on your edge so you don't get a lot of seepage. This is just a sugar bottle. You can get them anywhere, any um, cake decorating store, Amazon, um, eBay any place like that. So you wanna go along your edge like that and then just kinda of go in where that seam is. And that way you won't get a lot of seepage on your, you know, coming out. And that's it. And then you fold this up. And here you have your nine by six bag. Just like that. So after you finish doing that, just straighten it all out. Now you want this part to be on your inside when you fold it, but you want your open part to be the part of your cover. So when you open it, this is going to be open and you'll see why in a minute. Oh, there's a tiny little bit there that I'm gonna cut off. And now, sometimes that'll happen. Just take your scissors and cut that piece off. So there you have your cover for your journal and you're like, Cheryl, how in the heck is that journal going to hold anything? It's just that um, very lightweight paper. Well, so is the paper bags that you buy. They're just made out of the exact same thing. So there you have your opening and there you have your inside. And then you just take your papers and you want to cut your papers at eight and a half by six because what you have here is a nine by six. So in order for it to fit inside, you've got your eight and a half by six and there you go. And you've got your signature started. I wanted to tell you about this paper. This paper is excellent. It's like book paper. You can get it on Amazon. You get about 500 sheets. It's a piece of construction paper. I remember it when I was a kid. We used it in school. Um, it comes 
nine by 12 because it's construction paper. So you wanna cut it eight and a half by 11 if you're gonna use it in your printer or whatever. I'm gonna show you um, how close to book paper it is. This piece of paper is um, 1800s Italian paper. And here is our um, paper from, um, from Amazon and they're close. I mean, it's exact except in, I can see in the camera that the color is not exact, but if you looked at it here, you would see that it was an exact same color. It is the greatest paper in the world. No tea staining, no nothing. Both sides are the same. And I wanna show you um, over here somewhere. I have, what did I do with it? It doesn't matter. Um, I had printed, I had printed this on a piece of this, but I don't know where it is. Um, so anyway, you can print this, you know, put it, put it on your copy machine. It's just a postcard. You put it on your copy machine. You put in your nine and a half by 11, already cut nine and a half by 11. Put this in your printer, put this on top, print it through and it, you don't have that stark whiteness. But if you like to start whiteness, then by all means, copy this postcard if you don't want to lose it onto a piece of white um, cardstock. And that's it. So that takes care of that. Now for the cover, we don't want to leave it plain. Here's mine. I just have Shirley Temple on it because I had this already made. And in order for me to make it fall, I just put seeds of autumn right here. And then I put some pumpkins down here. And then I started decorating the inside with um, fall paper. Same thing with this one was already made. I had her. These are just postcards, my own personal collection. This is from the 1800s. Um, I photocopy it um, and actually it's right here. Here's the postcard. You can't even tell the difference. This is on white cardstock. And um, yeah, that's it. So this was already made. I needed a fall journal. So I just put a ruffle and started right away. It became a fall journal. Um, before I even started the inside, the outside became a fall journal, the cover. And that's that. And you can see I've already put, you know, quite a bit of things in here. Um, the pocket here, papers, um, it's my... You want to make sure your signature has some weight to it. So this is just, uh, this is actually just 60 pound um, uh, copy paper. So um, yeah, whatever you want to use, as long as it's heavier than paper and that, that will be your center signature. So we have, now let's decorate our cover and I can give you a couple of different ways to do that. So we can do it several ways. Um, where is, oh, okay. So if you wanna make a Christmas one, this is a napkin. I just copied it onto copy paper and you can put it right on top of your bag. Now, if you want a border like I have, this is, this is your standard size postcard. Um, it's, I think, five by four, what is it? It's four, four by, uh, let's see, four by um, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. So it's four by five and a quarter is your standard postcard, I'm pretty sure. This one happens to be three and a half by five and a quarter. Uh, nope, five and a half. So it depends, but it's basically the same size as your, you know, your postcard. It can, you know, it's all going to look the same regardless. This is, these are two different postcards, two different errors. So um, that's that. Then you're going to take and put, like I said, I put fabric on this for time's sake. I'm not going to put anything. We're going to actually use, oh, here's that postcard that I printed. 
So there's that one. And I don't know where the other one went, but there it is. There's that one. I copied it on that paper we were just talking about. So, and then they just cut it out. This one, I just used the napkin. So you want to cut your cardstock um, a four by five and a half. No, put it through your printer, copy your napkin. No, sorry. You want to take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You want to put down your napkin and then you want to cut it four by five and a half. So I'm getting myself way ahead of myself here. So anyway, that's just a napkin decoupaged on some music sheet. And um, so that's what we're going to use today. If you wanted to, you could use um, for Christmas, you could use another napkin. This is actually a napkin printed on instead of decoupage if you don't want to decoupage it. And then he can go right on your bag and that can be your cover. So that's just an, another idea. So it's a, it's a napkin copied onto a piece of paper. Um, signature. You could do something like this. This is the napkin for Christmas. You can just copy it onto your copy paper and it can become a signature in your book. So I'm just giving you some cost-effective ways to um, decorate your books or, or what have you. So here's a piece of um, napkin. I thought it was real pretty with fall colors on it. You wanna just take that and you wanna glue it onto your cover. And like I said, these have fabric. You could put something like this here. It's not the exact same size, but for time's sake, let's do that. Um, no, it's way too wild. <laughs> uh, how about we do it on this? Because this one's already decorated with the um, stenciling. So we'll do it on this this one instead of this one, which is both, both of them, like I said, are the exact same thing, only this one is stenciled with the wax on it, and this one is not. So if you don't wanna put any, you know, color on it or whatever, and you wanna have a pretty border and not just that plain border, just, yeah, you just take your stencil, put it on top, and this is white acrylic um, paint, and you just stencil it on. And you don't have to use paint, you can use any color uh, Distress Ink, same thing. So you wanna put your, there you go. Put your postcard or whatever you wanna use to decorate the top. Um, and I always use four by five and a half for my top. Four by five and a half is going to be your picture onto a four by six folded. And I don't know what way the music's going, it's going this way. And you just put it down like this, get it centered, and there you go. Burnish it with your finger because it is napkin. So um, I wouldn't, I just, I actually literally just decoupaged the top of this because I had forgotten. I glued it, but I, I forgot to decoupage it. Decoupage I use um, matte liquid medium. And I use my most favorite tool in the world which is this, and you don't, there's nothing to it. It's silicone, you take a baby wipe, you don't need to wash it off or anything. You just take it when you're done. Now this has some decoupage still on it. It's been sitting there since we've been talking. You can just take it, it's off, it's clean. There you go. And like I said, it's it's not really a brush. It's a makeup brush. Or it's, people use it for masks and things like that. 
you can get them anywhere. Um, Dollar Tree has them. Um, don't spend a lot of money. So anyway, that's my favorite tool. I use it for everything. Glue, um, inks, things like that. That That's been through the mill. That's over a year old. So there you go. There is your um, fall journal. And for your signatures, you can use basically anything. Here I have some suggestions. I have some vellum that I put through um, the embossing machine and I embossed it. And when you do that, it's like leather. It's really nice. It comes out really good. So I have the vellum and um, like I said, it's embossed. I don't know if you can see the pattern. And then I have a book page. I have a little vellum bag inside here that I already put the notch in so that you can, you know, put something in there. I have a tea stained envelope that I cut the top off of and I have a notch here and a notch here so that that can be a pocket. And then this would be my centerpiece because it's heavier weight. And that's just some ideas to put inside your book. And I always put I put about 10 pages um, in my, in each journal is 10 pages. So it gives you 20 pages um, cut in half. And there you go. There's your fall journal. And you just do a three pamphlet stitch on the back like this. Now, if you wanna put this kind of a closure on it, then before you put this down, you would put your closure you know, your piece of fabric down and then you would put this down and then you would have it come out like this. I actually forgot that step, but not to worry because there's lots of ways that you can take care of that. You can take your crocodile, which is where? Oh, I don't wanna make this too long. Take your crocodile. And you can go right here. Center it about there, cut a hole. Take something that matches. I happen to have a yellow one right here. squeeze and there you go that's all there is to it and then you want to do it obviously to the other side kind of match it up and go in here do another one put your your um your grommet in take a piece of string happens to be Baker's Twine from the Dollar Tree. Put your signatures back in and you want to just string through there and tie it off. Give it a couple of knots and remember it'll be in your grommet so it's not going to tear the paper or anything. And then just cut off that little tail like that. And you want to do the same to the other side.
So there's lots of things you can use. You do not have to use um, pattern paper or digitals or anything like that. It's just so many different things that you can use for your bags um, to be able to do this, to have a really pretty journal. Now, to maybe add some more to the front, you could get out, say, um, what about your stickers? Let's try those. They always come in pretty handy for Halloween or for any kind of holiday. So let's see what we have in here. Um, this is my box that I keep all my magazine cutouts and what have you. Um, that would be too big. Oh. You could actually fussy cut that. Would look kind of nice. I'm not going to get real precise for time. Of course, it's going to bother me because I am precise, but <laughs> so you could do something like this with your glue. And like I said, I just pulled that right out of that box. I didn't even have to think about it. You don't have to think about it. The more you think about it, but the more time it's going to take you and you're going to be indecisive and you're going to be like, oh, you know, what should I put down? And it took me a while before I decided, finally, just put it down. Commit. You know, you've auditioned enough pieces. I used to audition 15 pieces before I finally said, all right, that one. Then I'd be like, mm, maybe the sunflower. No. There you go. Press that down. 